when they hold you, they do it with such innocence. That little girl runs to me every time when she comes in. You don't know what that does to me. People take children for such granted. But when I hold her, I see how precious God holds us. That's so important. The fearless hug that she gave me this morning, and being able to hug her back, God should be able to hug you the same, and you not resist. So many of you resist God holding you like that. Because you don't go to him in your innocence, but in your damage. He can't fix your damage unless you go to him in your innocence. Because when you know you're innocent and you're his child, he will love you just the same. And as easily as she receives my love, you should receive the love of the Father the same. Because his, like I held her, had no conditions on it. It's hard for me not having natural children of my own. God protected me when I was in the world because I would not have been a good father. But it, you, you learn. And then you see what a gift they are and you wonder how anybody can say no to them. So pray for families like you've never known. Because the family of America has been shipwrecked and hijacked. So pray that there be unity in the body of Christ, but even those that don't know Christ, but to realize what a gift they have from God when they have a husband, a wife, and children. You know how happy she is when she comes here. How come all of you are? Think about it. She comes in here, first thing she does, they put her down and she runs right for me. That's first. It's okay, let her go. Watch, come on. It doesn't get any better. It doesn't get any better than this. It doesn't get any better, huh? How come all of you don't come in with the same smile knowing how much your father loves you? How come you don't have this kind of joy? Especially when the music starts, she really gets happy. See, we should receive God the way she does. Huh? Yeah. See? She said, yeah. She knows. Look at that. children in this nation, an entire nation of children that are lost and without hope and a future. But God, you didn't create them for that. You created them to bring glory to your holy name because everybody is made in thy holy image. Lord, help heal the families in America. They've been shipwrecked. They've been hijacked by this world, by the flesh, by our government. But you are God and you created us to be a family. And Father, I pray healing in every family on the planet right now. That, Lord, you restore the family unit. You designed it that way from the beginning, Father. Arise in America, O oh God, and drive out all spirits of division. 
of ungodliness, of perversion, of immorality out of every home in America. Bring holiness and righteousness and the love of your son Jesus at the cross. Fill every home with the power of hope and salvation in Jesus' name. Oh God, we thank you for another beautiful day to love you, to serve you, to bring glory to you. Let us never forget what really matters, Father. And that's to seek your kingdom and your righteousness and to follow your ways, to walk in your ways, and to do your will, O oh God. Change the church to be that bride without blemish or spot in Jesus' name. Father, we dedicate this day, this service, the music, the word, the food, and our lives into the hands of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for another day to live for you and serve you. We ask for your presence to fill this house in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 It's amazing. You know, you, you live out in the world and then you become a child of God and you see life in a totally different way. You see people in a totally different way. You see children in a totally different way once Jesus has transformed your heart. That child should speak to all of you today. Her innocence. When we talk about Jesus, how excited she gets. When we worship the Lord and we sing, how excited she gets. What God wants to know is why you've gotten so far into your journey with Christ that you don't have that same innocence and hunger and thirst for the purity of God. Remember, His love is holy, it's pure, it's unconditional. The only condition God has on any of you is that you say yes to it. Do you know that? There's no rules, there's no formulas, there's no regulations. We don't have to burn animals anymore. We don't have to do anything but say, I just say yes to your love. Just like that child. That should be how we see God. The way she came running up to a man she's only met since we since she started coming last year, she's just starting to run around now. Hang on, Grandma. Uh, <laughs> but the thing is, that, that's how we should go to Him. She came running up here to a man <laughs> that stands like this and she's this big and she just jumps into my arms. Totally trusting that I'm going to hold her. Totally believing that my love for her is going to hold her and care for her. Why don't we go to our Heavenly Father the same way? Why? Because He's going to love her, and His love for her is a lot stronger than mine. He made her. Huh? Yeah, she knows. She knows exactly what we're talking about. We have a ten revival coming this week. I've asked for some people to get there early that can be greeters. I'm hoping some of you show up there by uh, Thursday, Friday. I need some people there by 5.30. Now I'll be there in the morning. Anybody wants to come help set up, it's at 9 o'clock. Uh, if anybody has time, if not, don't worry about it because there's already a crew coming. But the more, the better it's going to go up, the faster it's going to go up. You need to pray this week about the weather. <laughs> We're sitting there yesterday and they said, what the weather's going to be like. So I hate me having my phone. I went, boop. I said, start praying. Because <laughs> it's coming right at us. It didn't stop the water baptisms. That day did it. And my comment to everybody was, well, we'll just take them outside the tent. We'll water baptize them, pull them back in. It'll be okay. Um, but just be praying this week over this revival. It's so important. It starts at 7 on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It starts at 1. I'm doing a foot washing at 5 o'clock. Now I'm going to do a small teaching. There's going to be other ministers there. But I'm going to also use some of you whether they want to or not. Because guess what? They put me in charge of that part. <laughs> so I pretty much let them know. Most don't even understand the importance of foot washing, how holy it is, and what it really represents as far as the son's humbleness before the father. And how important it is 
it's almost a water baptism because Jesus says the only part that's unclean is the feet when you come in, especially sitting on the old walk in dirt back then. But the thing is, it's deeper than that. Because it's like the final cleansing of the rest of your vessel. Because when you put that feet in the water, you come out, now the whole vessel has been washed with the water. That's why the water is so important. But it's such a holy thing. But I know by Saturday, God will rearrange everything. I'll see how it's going to be set up. We already have tubs. We already have towels. But we need to come together because some of us came together yesterday. There was a healing between myself and some of the other pastors at a deeper level yesterday. As we walked shoulder to shoulder. There were three of us. The three of us kind of went this way for the last four years. The three of us walked together yesterday. Amen. And it was a beautiful thing that happened. Because there was a oneness there that we didn't have. And yesterday, God did a supernatural thing that He's been working on for a long time. But we have to be willing as His children to pray for one another. Stop just praying for this ministry. Pray for every ministry on the planet. Pray for every ministry that says they're born again believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to go back to prayers that are so much bigger than our even little town. Yes, God's going to do a great work here. But it's bigger than that. He wants to be a beacon of light in the whole world and the church needs to put itself aside and let God arise again and start lifting up the name of Jesus again. I tell everybody, lift up the name of Jesus because then everything will come into heavenly alignment. It is so powerful. But it's going to be a great time. Pray for the weather. Pray that God show mercy. <laughs> because that field has a lot of dirt. And if it's raining, bring your water boots. The kids will love it. <laughs> Nathan, don't blame anybody. <laughs> but it's going to be a beautiful time, all right? So just put that on your schedule this week. Be praying for it. We have Bible studies. We have everything. We'll figure out the same schedule for next Sunday. When you're going to practice songs. Uh, because we need to be there. There's a fifth Sunday sing that we haven't been to in years. I got asked yesterday if we would sing in it, um, so that'll be between the worship group and Terry. It's the end of November. When I got asked that yesterday, I knew the work God was doing. Because I was asking, can you guys come? And that's a real healing all in itself. And it's going to be at Heritage Bible Church. So they got a great sound system there and everything else. So it'll be up to them to decide what they want to sing, if they want to sing. Well, nothing like calling you out. Uh, not like putting pressure on you, nothing. You have to open your hearts to Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. You have to open your hearts like never before. You're going to find out that if you're not walking with Jesus and holding his hand, you're going to see what's really important today, what really matters, because it's very simple. It's very to the point. It's very simple, but very powerful. Because as I was studying it, and then he finally put it together last night while my wife was playing piano, I went, he said, no, it's that simple, but it's also that powerful, what really matters. And you'll see today how simple, because the simplicity of God is found in Christ. It says that in 1 Corinthians. So that being said, it's that simple but that powerful. And you need to get a hold of this now. Because tomorrow, next week, next month might be too late. The world is changing. We are talking about it before everybody got here today. You're watching the Bible unfold. Everything that Jesus spoke from the Old to the New Testament is unfolding before the Word, page by page, is being turned and coming to life. What was spoken of a thousand years ago, two thousand years ago, three thousand years ago, four thousand years ago, what was spoken all the way back from the beginning, the prophecies that have not been fulfilled, is now coming alive like never before. That's why I say open your hearts to God like never before. Because... It isn't a fear thing, but you need Him. I know I need Him. I posted something yesterday. 
I don't boast in my strengths and boast in God any other reason. I boast in my weaknesses because I know I need Him. I know I need His strength. I need His wisdom, His knowledge, His understanding, His discernment in all things. Because left to myself, I can't make it. Would I survive? Probably. But just the thought of trying to get through a day without Jesus is not a thought that I, I choose to make. I don't choose that anymore. I don't go to God and go, I can go do this. No, I don't. <laughs> I've learned the chastening is enough. <laughs> but guess what, though? He is ever present. He's right here, right now. He's with us. He's for us. Stop fighting Him and surrender to Him. Put all your hope, every ounce of your being, into the hands of the one who made you. Then you'll walk in the ways of peace. You'll walk in the ways, better yet, of victory. Of victory, because Jesus doesn't know defeat. It's not in his vocabulary. It should never be in yours. Because he gave us a victorious life here, not a defeated one. And he took care of that and gave us all that power at Calvary over 2,000 years ago. That's what we have. So when you worship today, Open your heart to God. Stop being afraid of what He's going to show you about yourself. <coughs> All He's going to do is fix what's wrong. Remember something. He's the great physician. He knows you better than you know you. He really, really does. Stop being afraid of it. He's not going to show you something to judge you. He's going to show you something to love you and to heal you. Never to judge. Amen? Amen. Amen.